Yeah. That guy was crazy. No. We just waited too long. In May of 2013, Just Us, a revolutionary and controversial script hit the desk of Warner Brothers Studios. Many of the world's most esteemed directors reviewed the script. It was fantastic. With watering mouths, Steven Spielberg, Quentin Tarantino, Steve McQueen, and Martin Scorsese fought tirelessly to gain rights to the script. However, the ideological parents of the revolutionary script, Thomas McClelland and Na Fanayan, were determined to see it to its finish. By June of 2013, the film was in shambles. $200 million over budget, and almost out of time, the film was abandoned. These are the events that turned a guaranteed blockbuster into the largest film catastrophe of our time. Welcome, Thomas McCollin, Moff and I, uh, the directors of the recently failed film, Just Us. First of all, how the hell did you go $200 million over a $100 million budget? You can just elaborate on that for us, please. Uh, where to start, you know? We were too confident. We assumed we'd make it all back. The $10 million we spent on food definitely did not help anyone. Was it that much? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the matching Lamborghinis didn't help either. We thought it would unify the cast. You saw how that worked out. Speaking of bringing this cast together, what was the vibe like amongst the cast members? Infantile. It was shockingly bad. I personally contribute the failure of this film entirely to the cast. Definitely. You don't take any responsibility for the failure of this film? Us? We toiled over this film. Yeah, if it was just us, <laughs> this movie would have been a success. Looking back on the film, was there anything you would have done differently? Anything you would have done differently? Yeah, buddy. What do you know when it comes to making the film? We did everything we could. Allow me to share some criticisms from your investors on the film. Investors that lost a lot of money. First of all, you guys spent $13 million to hire a speech therapist that obviously didn't work. Yeah. Listen to Phil's lines. <laughs> Completely incomprehensible. I'm the best WNBA coach. You say I don't know, Jeff. Sure you don't know. I will. You were uh, one of the most important actors on the set. What do you think went wrong? It went wrong was just communication, you know, just terrible. You know, we weren't getting it down, and not everybody could be at the same place at the same time, so, you know, we never had a real actual time to get into the filming, do it right, you know, take our time. So, I really... Oh my God, it's Phil DeBrickishaw! Ten-time WNBA Championship of the Year. Dang, I can't speak. <laughs> Secondly, $8.3 million to hire a professional driver? He was awful. You couldn't see any of Nick's running scene. Uh. It was written that I would love you. From Thirdly, you believed an online website and spent over $20 million hiring a crew that doesn't even exist to film this movie. Then, at the last minute, you ended up paying a homeless man $3 million to operate the camera. One camera, might I add. Look at the footage. You can barely see anything. Not only that, he robbed your wallet on camera. Look, just look at the video. In my defense, the homeless man, he had the softest, smoothest, most steady hands that I have ever felt, I mean, that I have ever seen. The camera work was bad, but he had a great smile. Mm -hmm. Absolutely ridiculous. R so, rumor has it that you saved money by providing your own sound effects. Is this true? Yeah, wasn't that genius? Do, 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 do,
couldn't hear anything. It sounded like terrible. This whole time, you've been complaining about us spending a ton of money. As you have. And this one time, we do something that saves us a whole bunch of money. You keep complaining. There's no pleasing you. You're never happy. I mean, what, what's with this guy? He doesn't understand. So, let's move on. We'll talk about your actors for a moment. I heard there were some problems with Nick Pittman. <laughs> there is a slight issue, yes. It's okay, Nock. He, uh, how do I say this? He suffered a horrible injury, and, uh, sadly he'll no longer be able to see the end of the film. Just because you guys won't finish it? No, dude. You got hit by a bus. <laughs> Justice, dude. <laughs> same night, same bus. Uh, that is horrible. You guys are terrible. It was dark oh. outside. You guys are awful. That is, see them. that is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. Oh. We're moving on. We'll move on. Calm yourselves. Oh. We are moving on. Okay. I, don't have, I have nothing to say to you two. So, well, new question. Got hit by a bus. New question. <laughs> new question. The so oh, this guy, Stuart Iron, stole the bus after he took his wallet. Okay, just. Uh, yeah, he soft did. hands. He did it. All right, all right. Sorry. Ask a question. Thank you. Off. Go ahead. Thank you. Let's, let's talk about Phil. He was probably the most important actor in this movie, I'd say. Mm -hmm. How would you rate his performance? What's the scale, Carl? The guy was the hardest working guy or cast member on the crew. Yeah. Right. What he could bring to the table, he brought to the table. If it wasn't for his muscle look addiction, yeah. he could have been there more, had a bigger part of the movie. Yeah. So there, there's outline problems you're saying with his addiction? More or less, yes. Okay. So let's just review your cast then. We have two dead. One addicted to high protein over the counter milk supplements. Yeah, that sounds about right. Were there any positives at all? What about Robert? Well, if it wasn't for his excessive involvement in the GAA, he could have been a great actor. What's the GAA again? Um, it's, a, it's a gardening alibi association. Oh, of course, of course. Um, back to Robert. He was just never around, you know? I think that's because he joined the Cambodian Rebel Warfare Organization. What? Yeah. I just interviewed him last week. He seemed normal, well, relative. Good afternoon, Robert. You know why you're here. What went wrong? How did this movie fail? Just us. Just us. Well, the actors suck, right? The actors are terrible. Right, you, you were an actor. Right. But I was the best actor there. And I'm a terrible actor, right? So now, so it's like, if I'm the best actor there, you really know how the movie just completely failed, right? Mm -hmm. There's no talent on the set whatsoever. Completely bad chemistry. The director was a complete... Yeah, the, I've heard a lot of problems with the, the, the dual directors, Knopf and I, and Thomas McClellan. How did you feel about them personally? Thomas is a straight... No, forget it. He was just mean. He was just... It was more like a dictatorship with those two. They were always fighting. Always fighting. Right. Uh, complete... Complete... Chaos on the set when they were there. Honestly, I dreaded, I dreaded making this movie every day. Just, he got an advance on his pay and was on the first flight to Cambodia. We have not seen him since. I'm just too confused. I think we should just wrap it up here. Um, I just want to ask you one more question. Ask Probably <clears throat> the most obvious question to ask about this movie. Why didn't you two bail? You had many other directors, directors interested in this movie. You could have taken large sums of money and just, you know, not try to direct it yourselves. Why didn't you? Would have been a safer route for sure, seeing that you guys are incompetent. It, we're incompetent? Yes. Our star actor gets hit by a bus. Both our star actors, as a matter of fact. The same bus? Yeah, forget about it. Muscle okay. milk addiction and Cambodian warfare. Move on. We're Move on. Okay, no, okay. Alright, why, why didn't you bail? Pride. It was our film. We couldn't abandon it. Not a thought ever crossed your mind to. Okay, well, I can respect that. Thank you guys. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate You know what? You know what? I don't appreciate it. You're never gonna make a movie in your life. <laughs> we'll see about that. You're the idiot here.
Nintendo. 